Welcome back to another show. It's late here. I don't know. <laughs> I, the energy may not have been there for this show. What do you hey, think? I think it was pretty good. Right. I think we had a lot to say about your guys' questions and some very important messages at the end. Yeah, we Make did go. Sure we went on a little rant. A little rant on the end. Enjoy the show. It's time for bed, I think. Okay, good night. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Hashtag Ask Lively TV. This is episode number 29, and if you're new to the show, thank you for joining us. This is the series where we take your questions on social media when you hashtag them Ask Lively TV, put them on Twitter here or on Instagram, Snapchat, or Facebook. Just use that hashtag so we can find your questions. Yep, we're happy to take any of your questions, even if they're non-fitness related. Yeah, that's right. So, so most questions are health and fitness related, which is cool. So we've reached the amount of episodes that we did on our previous Q&A yeah, show. Baby. So we hit the number. 29. And there's a whole lot more questions that are in the queue as well, guys. So yeah, we're um, going to keep it we'll going. We'll keep it going. It seems like you guys like the show. So with yeah. that said, let's jump into this show. I'll ask the first question on Facebook from Anuka Nayar says, Hi Brad and Jess, love your work. You guys are so inspiring. You seriously have inspired me to train myself better. Now I feel like I do work out. Before a week, I used to work out in the gym for two hours, but now following your starter guide, I can feel each and every muscle in my body. Now I train for an hour and I feel good about it. My, That's awesome. My question is, as you gave us a review on canned food, does it also apply to frozen packaged foods like spinach, berries, or any kind of veggies? Thank you so much, you guys are the best. Um, that's amazing. I'm so glad that we've like cut your workout time in half and that's just important yeah. for all of you guys to know that you don't need two hours in the gym. That's excessive. And if it is taking you that long to get your workout done, then your workout probably isn't that effective. Yeah. A lot of people just dilly dally around and don't actually work out. So I'm so glad to hear that. Um, about your question about packaged frozen foods, most, it depends on the food. I'm not going to say that all frozen food is like clean and healthy because you can buy like Totino's pizza rolls and like all <laughs> kinds of bagel bites yeah. and things in the frozen section that we wouldn't recommend. But things like spinach you mentioned and what else, strawberries and things that are single ingredient yeah. foods are for sure. It just because they're frozen doesn't mean that they have any preservatives. Oftentimes frozen food is even healthier yeah. than fresh food because it has, it can be like organic and no that's, pesticides. And, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So a lot of times with this frozen food is that they'll freeze it right away. So the when food right. is, so everything's locked into the food where a lot of people don't realize like some of this food that gets shipped from across country or from other countries and gets in, like a lot of the nutrients have, uh, I don't want to say they're gone, but the light that has hit, peak. yeah, they're not yeah. at their peak yet. Yeah. So that's when frozen fruits and vegetables can be even better for you. So yeah, well, just like Jessica said, when it's one ingredient stuff, mm -hmm. by all means, like we always have frozen berries. I have frozen berries all yeah, the time. Yeah, like there's a few things that we buy frozen on purpose. And um, some of our meats we buy frozen, like organic chicken breast, yeah. we'll buy it frozen. Um, we don't normally do frozen spinach because we like to eat it fresh, yeah. like in salads and stuff like that. But if you like your spinach cooked, then by all means, frozen spinach is great. Um, I can't think of, we've also sometimes had like some stir fry mixes that are frozen, which yep. is like broccoli and cauliflower yeah, like and stuff. So if, that if you can do that. If you're balling on a budget. Yeah. And it is cheaper that way. It's hard to get vegetables in your diet. Buy a bag of like the stir fry frozen vegetables. That's what I used to always do when- I'll never forget your smoothie, your frozen vegetables. <laughs> Have you guys seen that one? It's like old school Brad video where he puts Vegetable, what and else is in there? Sauce. Sriracha sauce. Yeah, so it's like a, a savory, spicy smoothie. Like nothing sweet in it's it. It's actually, I haven't had it in a while, but it was good. I <laughs> what did you call it? I can't remember. It was basically the video was called, we'll link it up below, but I think it was called like when you're tired and you have nothing to eat, eat this or something yeah, like something that. Yeah, something like that. It was like, yeah, when you have no um, fresh ingredients in your house, that's like a way you can yeah. make a really healthy, like really fast bachelor style meal. <laughs> I think it was like protein powder in it, wasn't there? I don't even I know. I don't remember. But yeah, frozen veggies in a smoothie, why not? Okay, Belinda Slater says, Hi Brad, I'm a sprinter who does speed, strength, and power training with my coach three days a week. What can I do on my off days? Do I do more exercise or not? Nice. That sounds like a girl that Serious. trains the way that I like it. And you have a coach, which thumbs up to you yeah. because that's like, 
next level, you know, when you have a coach, that's, that's when you know you're really serious. So but. what I would say is, what does your coach say? That's what I was exactly uh, honestly, thinking. I was like, shouldn't I, you ask your coach I'm that? Not a, I'm not sure why you would be asking us that because if there was a client of mine that I was training personally and then they would go to somebody on the internet and be like, what should I do? <laughs> like, just trust your coach. This is what I, what I always tell people. Trust your trainer. Um, just put your faith in them and, you know, at the end of the program or um, after, you know, give it enough time, of course. Right. But if it's not working, then move on to somebody else. But more yeah. than likely, I mean, you guys, you got to give, you know, these trainers out there a little more respect than I think. I mean, I could go on a whole other rant here. Like, sure, there's bad trainers out there that don't have a clue what they're doing. But yeah. most people, most trainers have their heart in the right place. They are educated on it. So just... They have a plan for you. Yeah, trust trust it. Yeah. And you know what? If you feel like iffy about your coach's plans, I think that's a really good time to have a heart-to-heart, -heart, like really open up about what your goals are, what you're hoping to get out of their coaching program, and, you know, why you feel like it may not be enough. Like, if you're asking this question, it sounds like maybe you think that three days a week isn't enough for yeah. you. So I would say open up that conversation with your coach and say, I feel like I'm not getting enough. I feel like I could do more, should I? Yeah, we, we would really need to know more information from you. Like it sounds like it's you're doing an athletic style workout, um, but we'd have to know what's going into your workouts. And also what your goals are. Like yeah. what are you hoping to accomplish? So get back to us on it, but my bottom line answer to that would be trust your coach. Yeah. Okay, Kathy Figueroa says, what are some foods that contribute to bloating? Any, oh. It sounds familiar, doesn't yeah. it? We just did a video on this. Any <clears throat> tips, remedies, quick fixes for bloat? Yeah, so basically um, good timing because I just did a video on this on Live Lean TV last week, I think yeah. is what it is. So we'll link that down below. It was five healthy foods that cause bloating. Yes. So of course you guys know unhealthy foods can bloat you too, but there are five foods that are you should be eating and it gives you tips on how you can eat them without getting the bloat. Yeah, so what was the actual question? Just what are some foods? Yeah, so go check out that video. You're, you're gonna see five in that video. Yeah, and um, if you aren't, I mean, like Jessica said, most bad foods will do that, like... The sodium is the, the kicker. Sodium, the sodium is the yeah. kicker. And you know, when you guys read on a package label, if you see the line that says sodium, if that's like above a thousand milligrams, a like lot. in a serving, like put that food back yeah. because that is, you know, that you're going to wake up with like puffy eyes yeah. and like looking like a blowfish in the morning. And, it's and, just, yeah, it's too much. And the other thing here, guys, a lot of people don't realize that when you have a diet that's high in carbohydrates as well, your body holds on to water. That's one of the, that's one of the things that happens when you have a high carb diet. So that could be it as well. Um, but go check out that video, and um, if you're eating any of those foods, we're not telling you not to eat those foods, but we do give you tips on how to still eat them because they are healthy and still not have that as much bloat. I'm going to say one quick fix remedy you can do is to drink a lot of water because that helps yeah, flush it out of you. So that's just one little quick snippet, but yeah, yeah just watch the video for the rest of our tips. Okay, next question on Snapchat from dex to real uh, Will a well-balanced diet help keep your testosterone levels high? A well-balanced diet? Yeah. Oh, yes. I would say, like, a good diet is key for any hormonal balance, whether it comes to men or women. Like, when your diet is good and well-balanced and well-rounded and you're getting the right essential nutrients and the right micronutrients and everything, you're going to have the best chance at having good hormones, like what you want. And testosterone is natural, naturally occurring, especially in men and like higher testosterone levels in men for sure. And so, yeah, I mean, the best thing you can do to increase your testosterone or like have it be optimal is to have a well-balanced yeah, diet. Yeah, I mean, so, yes. it, it all goes to the pillars of what we talk about on Living Lean. It's, you know, it's nutrition, which you just nailed. And just to get a little more deeper into the nutrition side of it, a lot of people don't realize that testosterone and a lot of other hormones in your body are just built on healthy fats. Mm -hmm. And when I'm saying healthy fats, you guys are probably thinking, oh, so like omega-3s and, you know, this and that. Saturated fat, that is key to testosterone. So red meat, coconut oil, like foods that are higher in saturated fat, like natural foods. So like one ingredient foods, not saturated foods that, you know, are chemically made in a... From like Doritos. In a, <laughs> yeah, yeah in, mm -hmm. a, in a laboratory. But real whole foods that are naturally high in saturated fat will help with your testosterone as well. But then yeah, again, it's the true. workouts like... Strength training is going to boost your testosterone. Heavy compound lifts like, you know, the deadlifts, the squats, the presses that we always talk about. And then sleep 
It's such a hormonal thing. When you're not sleeping, your, your, your testosterone, everything else is thrown off. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like the holistic approach that we always talk yes. about, nutrition, diet, sleep, recovery. Mm -hmm. All of those things are key to men and women's hormonal balance. Okay, so Apexer Forever says on Snapchat, is it bad to eat too much jarred or pickled food? I love eating hearts of palm and can go through a Costco jar of them in about three days. I also love to eat olives as a snack daily as well. What would be too much? Are there ingredients to look out for in these foods? Yeah, so getting back to what Jessica mentioned earlier, watch out for the sodium. Yeah. So in jarred <laughs> foods like pickles, we love pickles as well, but the sodium can get up it there. It does get crazy, yeah. I don't and even know, I what, what is jars of palm? Oh, hearts of palm. Or hearts of Heart, palm. A jar of hearts of palm. What is that? Um, hearts of palm is like, you know, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's like, <laughs> it's like a vegetable, I guess. <laughs> But it's, um, yeah, you've never had it. It's white and like um, tubular shape kind of. Never yeah. had it. I, I'm not even sure but where that actually comes from. Go look at the ingredients because um, a lot of times with uh, jarred items, there's also preservatives in it. Mm -hmm. And, and um, there could be like canola or soybean oil. That's one ingredient that we would look out for. Yeah. Um, and how much is too much? I would say more than one serving. Like, so read on the jar, like... I would just aim to have one serving per day and not finish the whole jar in three days. <laughs> that that would be my advice. Is, yeah. But... And I know it's hard because like, even though pickled foods like that can sort of be considered like a free food, like we consider like pickles to be a free food. Um, like he said, the sodium can yeah. really get out of hand. So it's like, you don't want to be super free with it because you might end up feeling really bloated from it or something. If you're not noticing any negative effect from eating that, then maybe it's okay for you. Um, but we wouldn't recommend it and I, we wouldn't do that ourselves. So hopefully that helps. All right. Next question on Snapchat from Zane1998 AK says, Hey Brad, what are your thoughts about eating white rice as a pre-workout meal? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like the question was for you. Okay. <laughs> um, it's an okay pre-workout meal. It's not for me. He does not me. like rice. You it's guys. He not, does not for like me. Rice. Um, you just don't like the taste of it mostly, right? Well, it's just, it makes me like, especially pre-workout, like I always say eating carbohydrates pre-workout for me makes me sleepy. It makes me groggy. <laughs> it makes you want to take a nap. It's like, okay, uh, you're up and then you're down. Like I just like this. <laughs> and um, so I always just, you know, pre-work, I train mostly fasted now, so I don't really have a pre-workout meal. But right. um, for some people, like if you're looking to gain a little bit more size, white rice is affordable. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world, yeah, it's but better than like Captain Crunch cereal yeah, or something. Yeah, it's, so. I mean, like the, the bodybuilders from the sixties and seventies were getting like big off of it. So yeah, and I would say most bodybuilders to this day still probably eat that as a pre or post workout yeah. meal because it is like a fast digesting carb. I just prefer to keep my carbs after my workout and I prefer my carbs from other sources of like, especially like sweet potatoes is mm -hmm. what. I like to have. Yeah. White rice is just, it's not really part of our diet. So hopefully that answers up for you. Okay. So Sandra Oladen on Snapchat, what is the science behind the difference between lifting for strength and lifting for mass? I.e. why is it possible that muscles can get stronger, but not bigger at the same time and vice versa? Yeah. Good question. So basically, the idea of getting stronger has different modalities to it than getting bigger. When I say modalities, I mean like tempos. I'm talking about rep schemes. I'm talking about intensity. And so when I say intensity, it means the amount of load that you're lifting. So if your goal is for lifting strength, so like on my liveleanstrength.com program, we lift lower reps, but the intensity is a lot higher. So we're bringing you a lot closer to your one rep max, which has that stimulus on the muscle to build, to get stronger because we're overloading it. Where if our goal was to build mass, to build muscle, we then take it to a little bit different with the uh, rep scheme. We're more in that eight to 12 rep, rep scheme for, mm -hmm. for mass building and the loads go down a little bit. So you're not lifting as heavy and you're focusing more on tempo as well. So it's, you know, it's a, you're coming up and then you're going down in a nice slow controlled motion on the eccentric. Um, so those are just a couple of the modalities, um, but you're talking about the science, like maybe you can get a little more specific on what you mean by that, but that's kind of the rationale and the ideas behind 
strength training for pure strength versus uh, training for muscle. Yeah, when you're trying to add size to your muscle, you want to focus on the time under tension. Exactly. So that's why he's saying like the slower, yeah. longer um, rep sets. So instead of just doing like one really heavy rep, which is going to help you get stronger, yeah. you do like 12 moderately heavy reps yeah. because that will have your muscle fibers under tension for longer, yeah. creating more microfiber tears, which are then going to repair and actually make the muscle size grow yeah. over time. And it's slow. Like, don't, like, I feel like sometimes people think that this is going to happen. Like you have one workout that tears your muscle fiber next day, you wake up like the incredible well, Hulk. It happened to me. I woke up Jack one morning. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. I'm done. It was Stop good. Stop spreading the lies, Bill. <laughs> well, geez, I guarantee we get a whole lot more subscribers and views if we were like. I wish it was that easy, honestly, <laughs> yeah. but it is not. And I just don't want you guys to get the impression that like, you know, one workout is going to make a gigantic difference in your life. If you want hypertrophy, you have to, you know, day after day, rep after rep. It takes a lot. And then also having your diet um, on point to match those goals too, because yeah. here's the thing, guys, whether you're training for strength or for hypertrophy, either one of those, if you're not eating enough food, yeah. like you don't have enough nutrients to help your body rebuild that muscle fiber, then you're really not going to yeah. see much result it, no matter how you train. Yeah. The, oh, Bruno, you okay? Like, <laughs> your dog over there having a little bit of a hiccup. He's got sinus issues. <laughs> you okay, buddy? All right, so anyway, the idea behind it. <laughs> just give him a second. Just wait for just Bruno. Give him a second. Okay, he's good. Thanks, bro. Love you, Bill. <laughs> um, I think, I, oh, so basically what the idea is you break the muscle down in the gym, you build it, grow it stronger and bigger outside the gym when you're eating. So remember that. Yes. Okay. But yeah, that is a good question because there really is a distinction between strength building yep. and size building. And I feel like people should know that because you should be training based on what your goal is. You know, if you want to get stronger, it's a different way of training than if you want to get bigger. And like Brad has two excellent programs that are for those specific goals. So yep. liveleanmass.com yes. to get bigger, liveleanstrength.com to get stronger. Next question. We're always question. telling you guys, seek out a program for your specific goal. Okay. Snapchat, jcchat84 says, how many grams of sugar should I aim to eat per day? I'm not seeing many results lately, although I'm consistently working out, hit and weight training, and I'm eating well. I think I need to cut my sugar intake, but don't know how many grams of sugar I should aim for. Wait, is this a guy or a girl? I don't it's know. A Does it J really? J chat. Um, doesn't say a guy or a girl. So there's different level of sugar recommendation, whether you're male or female. Um, but I think the girl one is 25 grams per day. Yeah, it's day, like 24 for girls, for 36 guys? for guys. 36, but like that's that. just... That's added sugars, guys. That's not That doesn't include your fruit and your starches and your regular food that but, has some uh, I grams mean, of sugar. I honestly don't even listen to that because yeah. like, if you have a really hard, intense workout, you should have more than 36 grams of sugar in your post-workout yeah, shake. And, yeah, exactly, because that's not even like, including... like activity that's so yeah. that's just for the gen pop yeah who aren't really working out they're going to the office in the day they're sitting yeah. on their ass all day and they're doing their thing so that's just you know once again guys you have to take that a a, rough guy, all into context that's just the average just like the recommended daily average of all the vitamins and minerals seem low to people and even who protein want to be healthy yeah yeah so um honestly um you're saying like so you're, you're not seeing many, many results like so how long have you been training consistently? Like, what does that mean? Has it been consistent for two weeks or has it been for like six months and you're not seeing changes? That could be a, a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, but sugar is just one aspect to it. Like maybe you need more protein, maybe you need more healthy fats, maybe you need more calories or less calories depending on what your goals are. Absolutely. So we can't really tell you what your sugar intake should be when we don't really know anything about your workout program, your body totally, composition yeah. or anything like that. So yeah. get back to us with some more details and we'll try to help you out. Yeah, deciding how many grams of anything that you need is it really depends on the whole picture. You can't, I, we can't just tell everyone like, oh, you all need 100 grams of protein because we don't know your body size, we don't know your goals, we don't know what yeah. the rest of your diet is made up of. So. It's, there's no like arbitrary number of grams that it's perfect for everyone. So figure out the whole picture. Okay, Ask Lovely TV. Wait, who's this from? Why is it black? I don't know, this was a Snapchat <laughs> I question. I think it was a Snap question, okay. What, we don't know the asker. What do you think about sushi? Would you consider it a cheat meal or is it healthy enough to be a good lunch? And by sushi, I'm not talking about the cheap crap. I mean the kind with <laughs> real fish and vegetables. All right, so I would say I wouldn't recommend you eat sushi every single day, 
But if you eat it like once a week, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't call that my cheat meal. Uh, because when I say a cheat meal, like I'm talking about something that's like outside of like, it's like a pizza or a ham, like a greasy it's burger like or something. It's made with ingredients that we would normally that eat, like cheese necessarily, and wheat yeah. and stuff like that. But sushi, if it's made of fish and vegetables, I mean, rice isn't, like we said, something that we normally eat, but it's like not an unhealthy food. If this is sashimi, where it's like the raw fish with no mm -hmm. rice and like, yeah, you could have that almost. I, I would say you could have that every day. That's if it's, not a cheat meal. Yeah, yeah. so it depends mm -hmm. on what type of sushi. But um, if it's the sushi roll with, you know, the rice around it and you're having, you know, some soy sauce on it and some of the, the thick, the, the thick, like, uh, dressings that they put on it sometimes. Oh, like uh, mayo, spicy yeah, mayo. Yeah, like and the, like and the that, tempera, yeah. And the tempura ones fried where it's tempura fried. Stuff, so. Yeah. That's true. That's a, that's a really good point is like there's all different types yeah. of sushi. And I know you said not the crappy stuff, but still, even with the high end stuff, there can be lots of variety. So it de definitely depends on what it is. But yeah, I would not recommend that every day for lunch. But if you're having that once a week, I'm, I'm sure you're fine. You're doing fine. All right. Last question is on Snapchat from Am Helix or Healy XX. What are your thoughts on weight loss programs like Weight Watchers and Slimming World? Slimming World, never heard of that. Love the show. Have you heard of Slimming World? Never heard of Slimming it. Slimming World. <laughs> Sounds like a reality show or something. Um, okay, thoughts on Weight Watchers, because that one I know. I think, I think it's positive that they're giving people like a system to follow and like something that's doable. Like I, I don't really know, like I've never done it myself, but I know that they have a point system where certain foods are certain points and you can help keep track of how much you're eating throughout the day and everything. I do think that's positive because I do, like you guys know, I'm a big advocate for people knowing and being really aware of how much they're taking in every day, especially when they're trying to control their weight. It's really important to have that knowledge and like a tool. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what their success rate is like. I've never really had anyone like come to me say they had like wild success on Weight Watchers. So I'm sure that they do have a lot of success stories, but I just personally haven't heard of any in my world, but I don't know. Yeah, That's my, because our, everyone who talks to us are following our program. Yeah, <laughs> that was what I was going to chirp yeah, in to say. say. It's like we get the, <laughs> it's, it's almost like people. Oh, people always ask about like beach body. And well, other workouts, like, and like, it's like going. Um, we like our workouts. Yeah, it's like going to Coca Cola saying, what do you think of Pepsi? Yeah, <laughs> it kind of is true. I mean, not really like that because we're. No, but I mean, <laughs> like, you guys have ants. to understand like we create nutrition and fitness yeah. programs. So if you ask us about other people's fitness and nutrition programs, which we have never done before, so we don't yeah. know, like so. But and we're always going to prefer our own because we created them and my we other, know them. My other point would have been like, is it sustainable? So oh yeah, Weight Watchers. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about it, but the way that we create our nutrition systems, our programs, our workout programs, there's built to be sustainable. So there's yes. things built into it where you can have your cheat meal, um, the food tastes delicious, it's easy to prepare, those sort of things. So it's not like hard to find like, exotic ingredients. Go give our programs bars. a try. Yeah. Yeah. Like we'll throw that out to you guys. Like yeah. don't like if you're watching our show, you're taking our tips, you're loving what we're putting out there for you guys. Like we have these programs in place, so then you can take what you're learning on these shows to the next level. It's a system in place. It's a program. It's step by step done for you. You just have to execute on it. So I'll just throw that challenge back out to you guys. Is you know, if you're wondering what this program's like, what this program is like, go check out our programs. Absolutely. But you know, if there's a feature of somebody else's programs that you guys really like and you think it's really helpful, like if you guys came to us and you said. I think the point system at Weight Watchers is really great and it really helps me out. Like we would consider, we would take that feedback and like consider those kind of features for our stuff. But you know, so far that hasn't happened. Yep. We don't use a point system with our nutritional programs or anything, but yeah, I would love for you guys to, if you like our philosophy and everything that we're talking about and you really jive with what we're saying and you want to like live the lean lifestyle instead of just losing weight. Yeah. Try our stuff. And here's the other thing I'll throw out there as well, and this doesn't just pertain to nutrition, but also our workout programs. It's like we'll get asked like about beach body programs. Yeah. Like, what do you think of like Tony Hortons or Jillian Michaels or this or and that Sean program? Or, yeah. And sure, like they're great, whatever. But if you tweet Jillian Michaels, ask her, what does how many reps should I do on this? Or can I replace this exercise with this exercise? Do you really think she's gonna tweet you back and get back to you and say, well, you can do this or a Snapchat? That's what we do. Like we are open books to you guys. Like you guys can snap us. We will snap you back with a video saying, try this exercise instead. Like you have our ear. Like 
um, we're just so much more accessible than some of these bigger companies out there that you know hopefully you know you guys value that you, you you see how much effort we're putting into helping you guys with with whatever you guys needs are yeah we are pretty much full-time on social media so if you guys follow us here on YouTube on the podcast on Twitter on snapchat everywhere we're trying to be like fully accessible and actually engage with you guys because like you said, it is important for us to actually connect with people who follow us and like yeah. actually converse with you and yeah. like, you know, applaud you for your results and for your small little successes. We yeah. love seeing that we're, along we're, the way. We're really trying to build a community mm -hmm. and the community leads to accountability and we're like one family. We're all going towards the same goal. We're all going towards the same journey. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's just one of the things about being in this lively family of ours is like, you know, we treat you guys as family. Like very rarely that we'll have a tweet come in or an Instagram comment or a question um, YouTube is a little bit more difficult because there's like just thousands and thousands of questions that we just can't manage to answer everything. Yeah. But we do our best to try to answer every single one of your guys' questions. So yeah. um, with that said, I think that is the episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, question of the day. I think I did the last one, right? No, it was my question today. Okay, so I'll ask. Spotlight you. back on you. Okay, so I do have a good question for you guys. You go, girl. What is your number one favorite social media that you hang out on? Like, are you most often on YouTube? Are you on Snapchat? Like, tell us what's the one you hang out on the most. All right, there you go. Social media, question it up or answer that down in the comments below. Start following each other as well. If you want to throw your handles in there. Yeah, then, put your um, handle down. You guys can keep each other accountable. With that said, thanks for watching. Live and lean. We'll see you guys at number 30 yeah. next time. Rio. Bye. Bye. Boo. Boo. Uh, how come we have some timed out yet? How much? What's the time on there? 27.01. That's why. So that was kind of a quick show. <laughs> you ready? I thought we were doing the thumbnail. No, we're doing the intro. Oh, okay.